So, as promised, a little more detail. The turbo setup. So the turbocharger is set right there. And you'll notice that I didn't remake an exhaust manifold. I have got a loop comes straight up underneath here. This is from a 90 Saab low pressure turbo. The uh, compressor housing is from a 94 Saab low pressure turbo. I don't know if that matters. But uh, I have my airbox mounted and I had this piece of pipe pin up at the local repair place. So that's in. I noticed a tremendous increase in snort. Um, maybe not necessarily power, but just the motor is much, much happier with the bigger air cleaner. Uh, that air cleaner is twice the size or so, twice the surface area or better. It probably still needs to be bigger than that. It's just a case of it's what I had. So it comes in over there, pulling from the far fender well, trying to keep her dry and clean as best as possible. And it's it's not the right place for the fender cut out, but it's close if you ever wanted to snorkel. And it comes in, you got a, a plumbing fitting over there and a plumbing fitting over here. And it comes into the carburetor. Now this is a Solidex replacement, which should have been obviously over here at the intake. And I just mounted it down here to the firewall. Now this plate has a water pass through because I was told by the, the carburetor blowers guys that I would have tremendous icing troubles. So this is an attempt to help alleviate that. However, she's such a nasty, horrible, cold-blooded beast now. Brutal to start it, especially if it has been sitting for a few days. And I know it's because of all the piping or whatever, but it's a brutal beast. I don't know if you could get it running cold. So we'll have to work in progress. So it comes in a Solidex, pulls through. So I'm drawing through the carburetor. This is marine grade fuel hose. It was supposed to be a brass wire and it turned out to be a steel wire, which made the bends quite a bit more difficult. A little heat, we got her through this wonderfully welded little hunk that I made to what is actually the uh, waste fitting for a garbage disposal, which for whatever reason turned out to be the right size. Welded to that, and that is the intake side, the suction side. And I've, I've siliconed it. I've got a washer, and I have a gasket, and I silicone the gasket. But I've put additional silicone around it, uh, you know, because it's drawn pretty hard under vacuum. Uh, just seemed like a good idea. So the turbocharger compresses the fuel-air mixture, blows it through another chunk of that marine hose, up and over another chunk of the marine hose. Everything is isolated with rubber. Up and over and down into the, the old intake port using the Soldex, uh, what would you call it, manifold riser adapter. And you'll notice there's a little bit of grease forming right here, which means I got a pinhole under vacuum that'll have to be addressed, which will be difficult because obviously it's a gasoline mix. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to pull clean and, and re-weld. Intake holes, because it is uh, unfortunately exhaust tubing, therefore heavy, supported off of that tab right there. Um, not the best, but then there's no real weight. It's more of a steady it, keep the carburetor from bouncing around. I don't know if you notice, but the carburetor is attached to the firewall at the bottom and at the top. Now, timing wise, I'd love to tell you precisely what timing I'm running, except I have no freaking idea because. My Jeep, like every other Jeep I've worked on, uh, I can't see the timing marks. And I know they're down there, and I know they exist because I saw them when I rebuilt it. But uh, yeah, I can't really see them. So I'll have to, I don't know, get some nail polish and paint it. But I haven't, this is, this is, it's still running points and a condenser, and there's no electronic ignition, which I was told would never work, but it seems to work just fine. It's running a mismatch of junkyard spark plug wires that I keep promising to replace and the way I tap in for oil pressure for my turbocharger is to take this remote oil filter and this is uh, something my father machined up for me and so rather than taking the outflow and running it down into the crank K or the uh, timing cover uh, which is where the standard oil outflow goes I instead run the clean oil out to the turbocharger. It's not a tremendous amount of oil, 
But then, I, uh, talking with the gentleman, I, I learned they don't really need a tremendous amount of oil, and that is perfectly sufficient, especially when it's water cooled the way it is. So, uh, I, you know, I don't have to worry about oiling the timing gears because I've got that little spray oiler thing that uh, Jeeps are so famous for. But that's the system. That's how I got it shoehorned in there. There's actually quite a bit of room. At some point, I'm going to have to redo uh, my steering linkage and probably should have done that before installing it, but you know how how life goes. I do not know how much boost I'm running. That's the boost control valve. I cut it open and uh, annealed the spring so that I am running quite a bit less boost. How much, I'm not sure. It was just, uh, you know, I don't want to blow it up. If I put a gauge on it and find out that the Jeep is turning two or three pounds, then maybe I'll bump it to four. If I put a gauge on it and find out it's already doing four, then I'm going to leave it the hell alone. Tremendous amount of low-end torque. Um, really quite impressive, especially now that I've tweaked the carburetor and tweaked the timing a little bit. Much more so than I would have thought. It's not a speed demon. I, I doubt the 0 to 45 times are, to be honest, all that that much shortened. It's, it's really sort of a grunty, low-range, bottom-end kind of torque, which is not at all what I expected, but I guess it's what comes from having a properly sized turbocharger. This is a T2525, so it's a little one. Uh, you could go smaller, but this came off a 2-liter motor, and the 134 cubic inch motor is more or less a 2-liter motor, so it seems to be reasonably, reasonably well done. Someone asked about the carburetor linkage. This is the regular carburetor linkage. What I did is I just come off of it uh, backwards. It, if you remember, would have come up and over the top. And now, it just mounts over here. So the carburetor still works fine. The throttle pedal still works fine. Other than bending this arm down and sideways to get it out of the way a little bit, it, uh, it all works normally. So, it's a neat project. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm not even telling you it's worth doing it. Certainly, you'd be better off with a small V6 swap. But I like it. I like to see the look of confusion when people hear the turbo whine. And uh, I don't know. I just like projects, like building things. And this was a fun one. So hopefully. Two months from now, you won't see yet another video of uh, holes in the crankcase or something like that. If you do, then I'll do a video of swapping in a, I don't know, a three-liter Ford V6 out of a Bronco because that's what I have sitting around. And like so many of my projects, it's not about what's best; it's about what's convenient and handy, which uh, probably causes me troubles in the long run. So, be. Uh, Happy to answer questions. Good fun. I recommend it. I'd be happy to answer questions. It's been an interesting project. It's been decent fun. Um, much of what is floating around on the net isn't true. And uh, much of what is floating around on the net is. It's kind of was a difficult thing to untangle. But it works. I can hear my lifters clattering so much more than I used.